Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. I hope you all had a happy Halloween. Uh, my family and I did. We had trick-or-treating. We trick-or-treat every year um, near the uh, Kahala area because that's a lot of rich people and they have a lot of big mansions and they give a lot of candy. There's one in particular and he's named the Candy Man. He's a candy distributor. He puts out a whole table full of candy in boxes sometimes, Twizzlers, whole packs and he gives it to you that's that's pretty awesome there's a whole line just waiting for that one well you know after that you start walking up to the other houses and stuff but it's really fun it's really cool uh this is us uh as uh you know kind of a dc and marvel and then the little one intended to be captain underpants by the way um but i did get people saying he looks like leonidas uh he looks like uh Superboy. Uh, when you know super baby super cal i guess um when you know uh in the christopher reeve one where he comes down and he's lifting up a uh the the car uh and so i guess he's so <laughs> so but in any case everybody thought he was really cute so anyway that was a hollow our halloween i hope you all had enjoyed your own halloween uh, uh and uh can't wait for next year i don't know where we're gonna do next year but uh, I might be Superman again because Superman is my favorite character. So I mean, I would definitely not worry about. I mean, I mine was really simple T-shirt and there was a little cape in the back um, and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, on October 31st, there was a couple of things. One in particular was um, Gal Gadot. She actually put out uh, this picture, and it's from Clay Annals. Clay Annals actually put it up. Uh, it's a picture of her in a Batman cowl. So in the spirit of Happy Halloween, she she put the Batman cowl on on the Justice League set and uh, was just imitating him. And Clay Annals took a nice picture of that. Uh, and then what? It's interesting when someone asked below it that if who it was this before or after Whedon destroyed it. Clay Annals just says before. Boom. Yeah, before the Whedon cut. So it's kind of a, like a small shade. He didn't shy away from answering that question at all. And this is before Whedon destroyed Justice League. So um, that's kind of cool upon that. Now, let's get into Aquaman real quick before we get into the major topic um, Aquaman is projected uh, right now early tracking is saying that Aquaman is in the 40 to 60 million dollars and then you know for comparison Wonder Woman was early tracking for 65 but ended up making 103 uh, Venom this is all from comic book debate by the way Venom was tracking for 60 million before opening to 80 million so it's very low on the safe side Aquaman is and so we're hopefully and expecting to probably be do a lot more than that except you know they're very holding back because of the amount of movies coming out uh, that weekend right there's got Bumblebee right and he also had Mary Poppins Returns uh, there is there's quite a bit of competition uh, in that weekend and I think that is hurting everybody hurting everybody I don't know why they did that they didn't spread it out a little bit more who knows but it's gonna hurt a little bit of everybody and there's just a lot of too many movies coming out on Christmas uh, on in December so I hope that people are banking on the repeats and viewings for the, the the weeks that are very slow and so some of those three or four of those movies are still going to be in theaters by then so um, uh, I intend to watch that first weekend Aquaman so and I can't wait to see what that's all about uh, I'm Aquaman is not is the least of my favorite maybe not the least but Certainly not something I'm really interested uh, too much in as a th as the character, but I'm really looking to see how this DCU, the last trailer, the extended trailer, blew me away with that nice tracking shot with the nice one shot takes, uh, and I, I really want to see some cool ass uh, underwater action adventure and i think it, it would be a at least uh, at least a good popcorn flick at least at the least uh so um i'm 
pretty sure you're going to take the family to see that so i'm looking forward to that but uh so i think the the numbers are really on the safe side and i'm expecting it to go up as the weeks goes by but of course that's all you know nobody really knows what the real numbers is until the numbers actually show up until the weekend of uh you know not many i don't think have actually really got on point of how the actual numbers turned out to be aside from just tracking and it just gets people a little jittery and things like that my says you know it's it's okay um that's actually understandable because of the amount of movies coming out that weekend it's just ridiculous and i mean I, I'm, I'm still saying that it's just ridiculous about that so anyway let's move on to the major major topics and it is none other than birds of prey now first we came off with we got a uh, nice little interview with kathy yan and uh, she t talked about a little bit of how she got into being the director of the movie and a bit of that. But I think everybody pretty much kind of focused in on was that um, uh, she confirmed that it is going to be a rated R film. Which is very interesting per se uh, as we're kind of thinking that in terms of the DC films that they're going to do the DC black label as movies that they can do that doesn't have to be connected to the DCEU right and that would be called um, uh, like Joker for instance that's going to be called the black label that's part of that now this is a spin-off Bird Birds of Prey is a spin-off of Suicide Squad 2 but in the you know uh, all intents and purposes you've got Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and so she is part of the DCEU so that is interesting how they are detracting this movie even though uh, one of those characters is part of the DCEU is in the so-called area where they can go rated R um, I don't know if Joker is rated R you know correct me if I'm wrong I don't know what it, that is but it's seemingly different from the light-hearted what there what appears to be light-hearted in Aquaman of course we don't know maybe Wonder Woman 84 will seem to have a different tone than Aquaman like Aquaman is uh, coming they've pretty much finished it during the time of Justice League so they really brightened that one up or maybe that was James Wan's intention depending on how you look at it depending on how you look at it but uh, if for for a lot of the people who are just looking at this whole broader picture and they're like well Aquaman was during the time of Jeff Johns. It's kind of late in the game already. They probably didn't change back, if there is any changing back, to some type of tone or anything to deter away from the bright, campy look. Of course, Shazam looks also bright, campy look. So, um, uh, and it's a more... I wouldn't say would it say would I say family friendly? I guess I would. I would I guess I would have said family friendly. Um, you know, it's something different to what uh, before, like Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and things like that, or what Suicide Squad was intended to be. So we've got this this distinction here that we're Aquaman, Shazam, and then you got the Wonder Woman 84, whether or not it continues to be like that or because of reshoots or whatever the delays, there's some type of weird change going on. Um, are we heading towards we're separating again? We're, we're doing that whole the Black Label and the regular DCEU. So Birds of Prey, Black Label, uh, Joker, part of on the side. Uh, it's a spin-off stories in a way. I guess he's kind of say like if Solo worked and there was other movies with the spin-off, well, Rogue One, that would be on this side, and then these other gigantic hero movies like Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman 84. Even though I think Shazam is a smaller film, it's a tentpole film. I think it's a superhero film, but it's not as well known as like Aquaman and Wonder Woman, right? Or I don't know, but. It could be big, but I, I'm just saying the budgets for those, you know, uh, it's interesting how they do th that distinction. So I don't know if that's going to work. I mean, uh, it's it's really like some like some say the Hamada effect. If Walter Hamada has been doing any type of of planning whatsoever and if it's really you know taking all this into effect and if he's really actually working it and making the separation of these universes um, that'd be really interesting and a lot of people are saying we won't actually see that 
until Wonder Woman 84, Birds of Prey, Joker. You know, maybe not even Wonder Woman 84, like Birds of Prey, Joker. If maybe Wonder Woman 84, if he's actually altering that as all, at well at all. Um, so, and Shazam and um, maybe parts of Shazam, Shazam, but Aquaman is already too late, so that's why they're just not doing too much of it. Though he is an executive producer on that, so that is interesting. We won't see, I guess, we won't see a bigger, grander picture until like three or four movies down the line. And you know, one of the movies that seemingly um, is part of what we think is the DCU, yet a tonally different, and I mean, rated R, you know, uh, away, straying away from this popcorn movie fashion, is Birds of Prey. Uh, and they've landed quite a bit of roles right now. I think they're only missing Cassandra Kane, but there's one person, and that's the villain that they finally, finally got to join on, and that's Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is been joined the cast of Black Birds of Prey as the villain Black Mask. Now it's interesting because the rap actually reported that he's in talks to join the uh, the uh, join the cast as Black Mask, and then Deadline reports like right a little bit after it says, "Oh, it's confirmed he is Black Mask." So. Uh, though there's no real official statement from Warner Brothers, but it that didn't stop you know uh, all the other casting like uh, Mary Elizabeth Winston as Huntress and things like that. So um, and they came out and they had interviews, so it was already confirmed at that point. So you and McGregor, I mean, I think there was two of them, right? There's two people that were in talks in the running. That was Ewan and Charlton Copley. Um, I actually prefer. Charlton Copeland because I think he'd be a pretty fantastic villain uh, and I think it, that's just my own uh, fault because I can't really picture Ewan McGregor as a villain I know he played a villain in Jane Got a Gun but I just he's just not villainy to me and I and I I can't wait to be totally wrong when he comes on screen and he's really compelling. But of course he's gonna have to have that black mask and he's gonna have the black mask the whole time. Uh, who knows? But I think you you it's pretty cool to see all these uh, high profile actors and actresses join the DCEU. Um, they've done it for the Marvel universe. That's a, you know. But uh, hopefully the story is great. It looks like uh, Kathy Yan loves what Christina Hudson has done with the story. Um, um, and um, I'm really looking forward to what uh, what Birds of Prey is actually is. Once you see Birds of Prey, I think we'll get a better picture of what's intended for this universe. I think I, I believe so um, because it's really is going to serve as a sequel in some sense to Suicide Squad 2, and um, just like we don't really know where Aquaman they know it's uh, after Justice League supposedly uh, we know Wonder Woman 84 is a sequel to Wonder Woman but before everything else so that's safe Shazam is after Man of Steel because we see those little Man of Steel things so with those movies we can kind of get a feel of how much connection do they still want to have with the movies from before and I think that's uh, worthy of excitement in that in that sense. Um, and you know, come on, girl, gang, rated R. I think uh, this is truly something else. Um, and just like what they're doing, DCEU, um, I'm sorry, DC uh, Universe uh, streaming services with um, um, Titans, how it's like pretty hard R. There's swearing, there's blood, there's gore. It's like watching Watchmen. It's like having Watchmen happen in DC in you know in this type of medium, not just in the comic books. We're seeing this type of medium for the DCU and and the DC streaming service, and I, I think that's uh, something to be excited to, about. It's uh, almost deterred away from Marvel type movies. Maybe ex with the exception of the Netflix Marvels, uh, which, you know, kind of off and on. I think Daredevil is probably the best out of all of them. But um, I'm glad to see them trying different things and different routes. But I'm still wondering if they can really pull it all together. You know what I mean? Really pull it all together. 
All right, um, and uh, hopefully, you know, because of the black label, Zack Snyder will be able to come back and direct something. You know, maybe that that cyborg movie that Ray Fisher really wants him to direct, or his his top pick to direct, uh, as Ray Fisher has talked about. Um, because I think there's so many stories that uh, Zack Snyder can do. Maybe he can really do an injustice. Maybe he can do like I would say end it all and a kingdom come i would be totally uh i would i would totally love that totally totally love that all right guys well that is it for tonight thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time